Hi, I'm Pastor Dave Ewing, and I'm the regional minister of the North American Baptist Conference Eastern Association Churches. And I have a question for you. You're, you're familiar with cars and automobiles. Say, take a Chevrolet. How many models of Chevrolets are there? Come on, can you think of three? Well, how about the Cruze, the Malibu, the Impala, the Equinox, the Blazer, the Traverse, and the Corvette? And that's all Chevrolet. Well, I want us just to take a few minutes and look at three, just three of uh, prayer models from the Bible, biblical prayer models. The first one is uh, the Billy Graham prayer model. He uses the ACTS X form, and we'll look at that in a minute. The second one is the Jesus prayer model, and that's from Matthew 6, 9 through 13, sometimes called the Our Father. And the third one is the Apostle Paul's prayer model in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. Now, I've been a pastor 50 years, and most of that time, I was the lead pastor, so I had a pastoral prayer every Sunday morning during the worship service. And I used the Billy Graham model, A-C-T-S. A is adoration. You praise, honor, worship God, and see him in all his glory. And then because you take a good look at that, you say, oh, wow. So we confess uh, and acknowledge that I'm sinful. I, I fall short of that. And the third, then we move on to Thanksgiving and express gratitude and appreciation for spiritual gifts and for physical gifts, blessings from God. And fourth, then, is supplication, where we uh, are humbly asking or requesting God to do something for others and for ourselves. And so we always started with the Billy Graham model. And then we always closed up with the Jesus prayer model, the Our Father. And we see in verses uh, 9 and 10, this, in this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in, uh, on earth as it is in heaven. And this is where we're uh, showing awesome respect for God and his kingdom. And we're asking for our basic needs where he says, Give us this day our daily bread. And then he moves on to spiritually clean. He wants to be righteous or spiritually clean. And that uh, says, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And this is then sums it up in the showing awesome respect for God and his kingdom in verse 13. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so that was always my routine as a pastor on Sunday morning. Start with the Billy Graham prayer model, finish up with the Jesus prayer model. Now, it wasn't until 2020 that I really realized that the Apostle Paul had a prayer model. And it's there in 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 7. And it's a, it's a beautiful model. And it starts out with, first of all, then I urge you that entreaties, prayers, pet petitions, and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men. And, you know, it starts out, first importance, this is very important. I urge everyone to pray for everyone. Um, yes, you can pray for kings and queens, but you also want to pray for prisoners. Yes, you can pray for men, but you also want to pray for women. And yes, you want to pray for little children, but you also want to pray for the old folks. And pray, it says here, I urge everyone to pray for everyone. And so this is Paul's prayer model urging and that for kings and for all who are in authority in order that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. And this is a beautiful thing. Now notice what he says so when he, talks about these kinds of prayers. In treaties, these are earnest requests or supplication of need. I really entreat you, Lord, so-and-so is in the hospital. Help them out. Come on. And then prayers, the word prayers are devote, devout, pardon me, devout spiritual petition to God. And then the petitions are persistent begging, 
Yes, we even beg God in prayer. And then thanksgiving, acknowledgement of God, the benefits. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. And then notice in verses 4, 5, and 6, he moves on. God, our Savior, desires everyone to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. That's beautiful. For the, You know that this is God's heart, his desire, verse 4. Who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow, praise the Lord. And he says, there is only one God and one mediator uh, between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all. This is, this is beautiful. And then he goes on to say, there is only one God, and one mediator between God and man, and that's Christ Jesus. He's the mediator. He gave himself as a ransom to pay for our sins. This is a beautiful prayer. And I love the way he sums it up in verse 7. For this, Paul was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. He puts flesh and blood. He puts feet on it and hands on it. He says, you, I'm calling on you. And so I'm calling on Mission Baptist Church. Come on. You're going to live this prayer. Get it out, read it, learn it, and live it. First Timothy 3, 1 through 7. Pray for everybody and pray for their salvation because he desires that everyone would be saved. And he's asking you to take a part in doing it. So let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, we just take this moment to adore you and worship you and bow down before you. And we take this moment to confess that we too often don't. And then we want to say, we do uh, thank you for all the blessings you give to us and all the blessings you give to Mission Baptist Church. And I make this supplication that you would make a special blessing upon Pastor Don and his family, upon Pastor Luke and his family, upon the whole church, Mission Baptist Church. Bless them abundantly. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David, for joining us. And thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, that was seven minutes.